When we design a new product or a complete music system, our goal is to make listening to music enjoyable and effortless. And clarity is essential to achieve this. For that reason, mechanical isolation and decoupling of audio components was always a part of our philosophy. For many years, we have been offering solutions for mechanical isolation of turntables and other hi-fi equipment. But we also looked for a solution to isolate our speakers, because they are the main source of vibrations in your listening environment. We were looking for a way to break this feedback loop and we wanted it to be a part of our product and not an additional accessory. So, we developed the isolation base for our Evolution speaker line. I will explain you how these work and show you how effective they are. So what exactly is it that we have to improve? It is ringing and resonances. Vibration measurements on a speaker cabinet is something that we are quite experienced with. We are doing that for years to improve the bracing inside of our speakers. And based on these measurements, we found that a decoupled speaker has drastically less ringing within the cabinet. No matter how rigid it is built, it is always better when isolated, because if done the right way, the cabinet stores less energy. Now, if you look at the decay of a sound that is reproduced by the driver in your speaker, we can calculate that the movement of the cone can be as little as one micron. Ringing by the speaker itself or vibration coming from the other speaker can be greater than this one micron. So we are masking details of the signal with noise. By reducing the overall noise floor within the whole speaker you can imagine how clarity increases. And what happens in the speaker also happens in your building. Energy transfers from the speaker into the floor causing resonances and distortion. By isolating the speaker, less energy is transferred through the floor and into other rooms. During the development process, we found some already available solutions that were quite effective, but only on a very narrow and specific frequency band. And we did not like how this affects the sound. That is why we decided to design our own solution, so let's see how the isolation bases work. They act as a wideband filter picking up energy from the speaker cabinet and absorbing it within the damper before it transfers into the floor. So we machine a plate from 10 or 12 mm aluminum that transfers as much energy as possible from the speaker into the feet where it gets absorbed. Now let me show you with some measurements what we were able to achieve. For the test in this video, I used an accelerometer and measured the amount of vibration on the cabinet wall and on the floor. I selected an EV900 reference loudspeaker to perform the tests. With the exact same speaker, I measured different scenarios. First scenario, the speaker stands directly on the floor. Second, I used spikes instead of the absorbers. Third, I used our isolation base. And finally, I compared it to a product from Townsend Audio. I used different test tones and analysis methods. Let's begin with the CEA 2010 burst signal. This test tone is closer to an actual music signal compared to a sine sweep. 
In this case, I used it to get a closer look at the multiple frequencies from 20 Hz to 1 kHz. I would like to point out that the measurement values are displayed on a logarithmic scale. So let's have a look. How much energy is transferred into the floor? Let's compare the different setups. With the speaker standing directly on the floor, we can see that all frequencies are transferred quite even in level. And we can see that there are resonances to each base frequency. So a signal that was not part of the original test tone is clearly measurable. Using spikes we see that some frequencies are better transferred than others. What is interesting is that the resonances are different too. We can say that there is a clear effect and in fact more coloration to the original signal because some frequencies are amplified and others are attenuated. If we look at our isolation base and the podium from Tanzan Audio, it is clear how effective energy is absorbed. At 250, 500 and 1 kHz, we can measure a small signal and if we compare the measured voltage levels, let's say at 250 Hz, it is 88% lower when using our feet. And below 200 Hz, we cannot measure a signal at all. Again, the measurement values are displayed on a logarithmic scale. For my next set of measurements, I placed the sensor on the back wall of the speaker. In all scenarios, it was positioned exactly at the same spot, only the feet changed. The base value is again the EV900 standing directly on the floor. We can see how even the frequencies measure in level. And there are almost no resonances to the base frequency. That is a result of the optimized bracing structure inside of the cabinet. If I use our isolation base or the podium from Townsend Audio, the measured amount of vibrations is reduced by about 45 to 55 percent. And we can see that this is well balanced over all frequencies. But what happens when we use spikes? Well, things are not exactly pretty. The measured values peak outside of our scale, at least most of them, and we measure additional resonances. We will look at this uh, in more detail in just a moment. But how is this even possible? A little later, when I will show you some time frequency analysis, we will see the reason for this result. And the fact that we can measure additional vibrations on the speaker cabinet when we use spikes. This is a more detailed view at the 20 Hz CEA 2010 measurement. The red graph is with spikes and the blue graph is our isolation base. We can calculate that the measured voltage and with it the amount of energy is 85% lower. And with spikes we can see resonances at 60, 80 and 100 Hz. For the clarity of sound, it is very important how long a tone decays or resonates even though the actual signal is no longer present. And to illustrate this, we use time frequency analysis, measured from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. Here we can see not only the main impulse, but also the behavior over time. At first, we compare the cabinet measurement, spikes versus speaker standing directly on the floor. More blue or white parts in the graph means a lower level, so less energy. Now these spikes clean up the picture quite a bit, but we can see standing waves and resonances that seem not to decay. Around 20 Hz and from 50 to 80 Hz it is clearly visible. If we add the measurement from the floor to this picture, we can see that the energy is bouncing back from the floor into the speaker. That explains the result we saw earlier in our CEA 2010 burst test. And now what about isolation? 
Can these isolation bases do more and perform better? Yes, they can. The results are quite impressive. The impulse decays so much faster. For the most part of the spectrum, levels are 55 dB lower. And the measurements on the floor show similar results. With the spikes mounted, we can see the standing waves again. We can also see how good the isolation base transfers energy between 5 and 10 kHz. But as we saw before, it does not get back into the speaker because the feed absorbs it on its way back. And all this leads us to the main questions. Is it possible to measure a difference of the actual sound coming out of the speaker? Does the frequency uh, response change? And can we measure that in a real-world scenario? A listening room and not in a lab or an anechoic chamber? There are two answers to this question. No, the frequency response does not change, which is good, because otherwise the isolation base would do a bad job. And the improvement that we are after is not a different frequency response. We want better clarity and less smearing. So the second answer is yes, we can actually measure a difference in a normal listening room with a microphone at the listening position. But it is in the time domain where we can see the difference. The time frequency analysis between the speaker standing on the floor compared to the speaker with isolation measured at the exact same location shows less additional energy in the room. It decays faster without any acoustical treatment just by isolating the speaker from the floor. And in this way I explain and prove the audible difference coming from our isolation base. The bass and midrange are clearer and details in sound are easier to perceive. So this is the isolation base that is included on all our evolution reference speakers. They are perfectly matched to every model, no adjustments or guesswork is required. The speaker stands very stable and the feet are height adjustable if your floor is not perfectly level. They are machined aluminum made in-house at Credo Audio Switzerland and the standard finishes are black and natural anodized. If you have any questions you can contact me on our website and to learn more about our products make sure to subscribe to this channel. I'm Michael Kraske from Credo Audio Switzerland and I thank you for watching.